When you visit New York City, it's hard to go one block without seeing the I Love New York logo on someone's t-shirt, in a window, or on the side of a building. But the four character icon is more than just a logo. This simple design actually helped pull New York out of its darkest era. This video is brought to you by CuriosityStream. For 30 days of free access to thousands of documentaries, use our promo code Cheddar Explains when you sign up. The I Love New York logo has had a huge cultural impact on the big city. It changed advertising, it changed New York City, and not to be romanticist, but it literally changed the world. And who better to learn about the iconic logo from than the celebrated graphic designer who made it? Milton Glaser. I don't know exactly how to say what I do. I'm a graphic designer. I design all kinds of things, magazines, interiors, restaurants. The thing that people know me most for is the I Love New York identity. During the 70s, the city, uh, the city had uh, become dark. Uh, people were leaving because it was unpleasant to be here. Crime was uh, rampant. Uh, services were not working, and there was a sense of doom atmospherically. And which time the city decided something had to be done uh, in an extraordinary way to change the perception of what city life was. And the sense was that if you came here, it was dangerous uh, for you because there was no telling who was in the street. Crime drastically increased during this time. Homicides more than doubled from 800 in 1965 to 2000 in 1972. And the reduction in the city's police force due to the financial crisis didn't help. During the mid-1970s, it got so bad that the Council for Public Safety released a pamphlet titled Welcome to Fear City, a survival guide for visitors to the city of New York. It had tips like, don't walk the streets after 6 p.m., don't leave Manhattan, and never take the subway for any reason whatsoever. By the spring of 1975, the city had run out of money. President Ford denied federal assistance to save New York City from the brink of bankruptcy, and the cherry came on top with the blackout of 77. The whole city went dark on July 13, 1977, and the lights didn't come back until the next morning. Unlike the blackouts of 1965 and 2003, this one resulted in citywide looting, arson, and the largest mass arrest in city history, with 3,776 people being taken into custody. The city was at an all-time low. Nobody wanted to visit, and they were in need of major assistance. They came to me because the city uh, had acknowledged to itself that something had to be done, and that had to be done collectively, and that had to be done swiftly. William S. Boyle, Deputy Commissioner of the New York State Department of Commerce, tapped advertising agency Wells Rich Green to create a campaign. They came up with the slogan, I Love New York, and a jingle that would accompany it. But Boyle specifically recruited Milton to create the artwork for it. I did a, a design, I must say a rather anonymous design, because I thought it was a, a two-week initiative that after a couple of weeks it would disappear and never be seen again. And I took the lazy way out and did something quick and superficial. But the following day, I was in a cab coming down here to the studio and I realized there was a better way of expressing that idea, and that was to sort of use the heart and change the meaning of a heart from a noun to a verb. In any case, I called up the guy, uh, Bill Doyle, who had given me the assignment and told him, listen, Bill, uh, I understand you had my first sketch approved. He said, yes. I said, well, I have a second thought. He said, no, 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 no. Uh, we don't want second thoughts. They approved it. I don't want to resubmit it. I said, let me show it to you. I showed it to him. He said, this is better. The agency moved forward with Milton's new design, and the city changed forever. According to Douglas C. Frechtling, the director of the U.S. Travel Data Center, 
It was the first time a catchy phrase had been backed by dollars. And the campaign worked. Over the next few years, tourism-generated expenditures rose from $5.5 billion in 1976 to $14.4 billion in 1985. The bright, bold logo symbolized a headstrong city that wasn't going down without a fight. And it didn't take long before the image started popping up on t-shirts, mugs, murals, and billboards across the city. Seeing how New York changed as a consequence of the logo is a, a, one of those cosmic, unanswerable questions. You can't answer that question. At a certain point, it no longer has anything to do with you. It really has created a life of its own. Because of the campaign and the money coming in, more developers wanted to invest in the state. The more money that was poured in, the more people wanted to come and be a part of the big city. One thing you understand about branding, which people involved in the branding business don't understand, branding is a, a process of developing affection. That what a brand does when it works correctly it, it makes you feel affectionate towards the entity that produced the brand. And it did its job. People love New York and continually flock to the big city. This year, the city is on pace to draw a record number of 67 million tourists, a number that might have never happened had it not been for Mr. Glazer's iconic design. Everything starts somewhere. A small thing suddenly, now particularly, goes viral and it's all over the world overnight. This little piece of whatever has, has basically become one of the most uh, omnipresent images in the world. All over, every country you go to has I love something. And today, the logo continues to bring in $30 million annually, with a portion of these profits going directly to New York State Empire State Development, who currently holds the trademark. It uh, is a glorious accident that occurred without anybody anticipating what it would be. I have no idea of why it happened the way it happened. I'm very happy that it has a physical pre presence. I'm very glad that it represents a community, but it is an extraordinary thing in anybody's life. And I am extremely grateful that it happened and, and it changed the world. New York City has a rich history, full of stories just like this one. If you're interested in learning about how cities have grown and evolved, you'll also be interested in learning about how they're working to adapt to the future. This is why we at Cheddar love the series Cities of Tomorrow, available on CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is the video service for people like us, interested in using our free time to learn more about the world. They have thousands of documentaries that you can stream pretty much on any device you own, and it only costs $20 for a full year. Use the promo code Cheddar Explains and you'll get an extended 30-day free trial to check it out. You can also click on the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And ring the bell below, that way you're notified whenever we post a new video.